In this video, I'm going to get folks started working with your Google account and some of the options that are available to you. When you go to first set up a Google account, you're probably going to do it via Gmail. Now, when you create this account, one thing to be aware of is the name that you choose for the account as far as the email account. Once you set that, you're locked into that name. Google does not let you change that out. So for instance, if uh, you're using one name and then you get married, it will not let you switch it over. So with that in mind, you probably, especially if you're gonna use the Google system with something like a learning management system, such as Blackboard, Google Classroom, Moodle, etc., you probably wanna choose something that's generic. Now, a couple of things here is when you first make the account, it is gonna bring you into the Gmail area. You don't really need to use this as an email account, but what it does give you access to is over here in the upper right-hand corner. In the upper right-hand corner here, and I'll zoom in so you can see it, there's a little button here for the Google Apps. Under Google Apps, this is pretty much everything you have available to you through the use of your Google account. This includes probably the big ones that we're concerned about here are things like the YouTube, if you'd like to actually make YouTube videos and upload them, but more specifically, your Google Drive. Again, you, you can also use Chrome as a web browser to even have more integration. I still stick to Firefox. It's a personal preference. No matter where you are when you're working within the Google Suite, you will have this access to this button up here in the upper right hand corner that will let you go to your Google Apps. So let's go ahead and hop over into Google Drive now. Now, a couple of things with Google Drive is, again, it is a cloud-based environment. What that means is it is actually storing the information that you have here up on the cloud. Now, notice once again over on the upper right-hand side here, there's all of that kind of main menu options here as far as your account, the apps, settings, etc. Normally what will happen is in this main drive windowed area here, it will show you all of the different elements that you have that you can work with regarding anything that you can make that can be stored in the drive. You have a suggested area that will show you your most recent files, but then you'll also have a folders and files area showing what you currently have stored. The main way of adding into the drive and storing in your drive is using the new button. Notice by default, Google asks you if it want, you want to make a folder or even if you have local files that you'd like to upload. However, as far as the Google Office Suite, you have three main options here. You have Docs, which is the equivalent of Word, Sheets, which is the equivalent of a light version of Excel, and Slides, which is the equivalent of PowerPoint. You can also make your own forms, but also here, you got some great options too that you could make a Google website if you wanted to. You can also do drawings or Jamboards. I know I like to use the Jamboards uh, within my classes. The only thing is, is if you wanna use something like a Jamboard, your students are also gonna need to have Gmail accounts. As we get further in as far as online learning, learning management systems, it seems more and more high schools are using the Google Suite. So the odds are actually pretty good, especially if you're dealing with students who are coming right out of high school. They probably have some sort of Google account already pre-made. Now, another thing that I wanted to show though is over on your navigation bar here on the left-hand side. Here you have the default for the drive. And you can see I actually have a class, a Google Classroom associated with this account. So it makes a subfolder for me specifically for my classroom. We're not gonna get into this here, but if you were to sync and use the application for your computer, you could actually sync up specific folders and drives. There's also a section here called Shared, shared With Me in Shared With Me, this is a great way that students can either send you direct links to their items in their Google Drives where it won't take up your storage space, which you can see down at the bottom here. And then the last few items here, you have the most recent files that you have uploaded and opened, any of your favorites, and then lastly, the trash bin. 
Things will live in the trash bin for 30 days, or you can immediately empty the trash to help with storage space. The last thing in this video I just want to show you real quick is actually looking at what is stored on the drive here. Even though whenever you click on my drive, it shows you the overall what is in the drive, down here under storage, you can actually click on storage. And what it'll actually show you is the files that are currently using the storage for your cloud drive. So as you can see right now, I'm not using a lot of space here. Whenever I deal more in multimedia projects though, especially dealing with student submissions, my main drive is actually a two terabyte that I buy storage for. Again, you have some great options here as far as being able to change. I mean, so I pay $100 a year for a two terabyte drive. Not that bad, honestly. So, however, if you're dealing more that students are working with papers and PowerPoint presentations, the base drive size is probably going to work for you, especially to whenever you're working with something like Blackboard and you're just looking to have a reference document. You're not going to need a ton of space for that. But this is just a brief overview and getting folks started on using your Google account and going between your Google Mail and coming over to the Google Drive.